Good evening, everybody. In continuation to our current series, where we have been trying to explore, we have been exploring rather the the possibility of utilizing biomass in, to satisfy or to produce uh, fossil fuel alternatives. In this case, specifically utilizing oils to produce a biodiesel as a sustainable diesel alternative. Right, we have. I've got a series of questions um, the past few weeks, right? So I've deliberately not um, produced any videos um, in this past week so as to give you as the opportunity to raise all the issues that were that they, they, they have with respect to the videos, right? So amongst the questions that were raised, the two that I found um, I think should are worthy of further discussions are highlighted before you right so essentially the first query was the possibility of introducing more or less real oils real oils to the to the simulation so waste cooking oil introduction to aspen plus now of course we should recognize that you will not find um, waste cooking oil as a component in aspen plus right this is not possible however right once you know the components the the constituents the fatty acid distribution of waste cooking oil it is possible to model waste cooking oil right now there are three approaches to this now the first approach will be to simply um, look at the fatty acid distribution of waste cooking oil right and identify um, the most dominant the most dominant fatty acid components right and now model your oil as that component right the second approach is based is based on finding the the, the fatty acid distribution then finding the re, the oils the rep representative oils so in other words say an oil has um, oleic acid 50 percent and steric acid say 50 percent you find the oil so the oil will be trialing for oleic acid and stirring for um, steric acid right so you find the oils and model the mixture based on the distribution that you have gotten from the experiments as a feed right then finally you could just find a way to aggregate the properties of the oil right um, then find the best representative model that best simulates the behavior of the mixture i will describe what i mean you know the, the, the third um, approach i think um, was demonstrated in the publication which i will link um, in the description below right so now this is essentially the the publication can I make this bigger so what the authors actually did was that they were employing they were trying to model the biodiesel production from um, oil source from dissolved air flotation sludge, right? So they found the fatty acid distribution of the oils. You see, it has a lot of oils. Now you will not see oil, that sludge oil from in Aspen, but you will see each of these components in Aspen Plus. So the first approach, like I said, is to simply just take the top the top fraction right so in this case you say your 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 steric acid is the most dominant and since steric acid is essentially from sterine the triglyceride <laughs> excuse me it's essentially from the triglyceride of sterine you can just model your oil as sterine right so in this case you come to your model right so your main flow you 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 need to model this as sterine so essentially we we'll need to introduce right the components of stearine right so stearine um it's fine now right then you just okay this is the are you back name the stearine is the alternative so you just at the selected compound right so that's that's pretty easy and straightforward right so you can call this 
um, in this case based on this paper we can call this the the oil from DAF so DAF oil so DAF give a hyphen oil right so this is one way right you call rename yep now alternatively you determine that all your oil has so many mass fractions you now put each of these independently however the problem with this in my opinion is that when you are utilizing you know if you choose to utilize a kinetic model for instance um, let's go back to the simulation right and we are utilizing the CSTR where we are specifying the kinetic model that su suggests that you would need to put um, apart from just specifying sorry about this apart from just specifying the reaction right so you have multiple reactions for each of the components right you have multiple reactions each of the components <coughs> you still need to specify the kinetics independently so it's a bit more tedious so you have trialine sterine you know so you have the reactions you have the kinetics for each of the components now this will seem to me like the most accurate approach but it's time consuming right in the same way if you choose to utilize the conversion um our storage reactor you will need to introduce multiple reactions with multiple fractional conversions which you will have to get from experimental work right so people have done this is not new the ideas are not new so you just go on the literature google um there is stirring stirring um reaction with methanol fractional conversion to produce say for instance if you are using methanol methyl steroids right so it's easy you see but it's just a bit time consuming right now alternatively right based on what this this folks here did what they essentially did was to aggregate the properties so there's a method that uh, more or less splits the 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 oil into um constituent um, backbones right so now uh, this method is based it's called the ccf method right that more or less splits the the constituents into the backbone so you, based on that you can predict the properties so i'm just trying to get to the final table right so essentially you have the table two again i'll put this part there so you guys can have a quick read and see it's quite interesting right so the chemical constituent fragment method right so it splits the triglyceride or the oil into the major fragments so it splits it into the major three fatty acids and the, gly um, the glycerol backbone right right based on this constituent you can now predict the properties of the oil right you can predict the properties of the oil so here you have the boiling temperature heat of formation you know so you have the, the so many properties predicted based on the constituents right so he used uh, the authors used uh, the group comp um, contribution parameters to also aid in the prediction of certain properties that need to be inputted into aspect right now having done this prediction which i dare say was seems like a lot of work right they were able to identify so this is a very long read um but it's quite interesting so it's, it's worth your time so now they identified the properties the average properties of this um oil that is obtained from from your sludge right and they see so you have the critical temperature critical pressure these are properties that are typically inputted into aspen right so aspen has these properties for most common constituents right but if you are bringing in a unique component you need to input this into the property database right so they compared the properties of the oil or rather the fatty acid that represents the oil with the components the major components that make up the oil right and found out that based on the absolute relative deviation they were able to find out that the oleic acid was still the best when it comes to representing or modeling this oil you see as illustrated here you see it had the lowest um deviations right from the 
estimates generated using the chemical consider method that will be described in the paper you know so you have to have a read of it right so that's the third approach right so if i were to rank approaches the most accurate approach would be to model each uh, component oil or fatty acid um, independently like you model it's one component at a time followed by this approach that finds the aggregation of the properties into like a smooth data base and you now compare it with common oil, um, oils and see which of them best bottles your oil right or you just simply utilize the fraction of the oil the fatty acid for instance waste cooking oil perhaps the most dominant fraction of waste cooking oil is um you know steric uh, acid right so you just model it as steric and you move on right that would be the easiest but of course not as accurate as the other two right now moving on the next query we had was uh, um, now apparently the viewer had utilized he said he was utilizing a catalytic reaction he introduced a catalyst right so let's say he introduced an acid catalyst for simplicity i don't know the catalyst to use but whatever right the solid catalyst the heterogeneous catalyst right but he said that how to set the flow rates <coughs> and the time he now utilized the aerosol reactor and there was no change now there was no change because you have already defined your conversion based on what you obtained from the literature for a catalyst free process by introducing a stream Aspen doesn't suddenly increase your yield or your conversions for you. It is your job to go to the literature for that particular catalyst that you are introducing, find out the conversion and change the conversion in the reactor accordingly. Right? So that is your job. Right? So in, in other words, if you had you introduced a catalyst um, and let's call the catalyst, say, the 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 quasi homogeneous catalyst of DOEX, right? It's now being used quite um, readily because it's capable of easily donating um, hydrogen ions in aqueous solutions, right? While still maintaining a high level of uh, separation of phase um, stability, right? So let's assume you go to find in the literature that yes, you can utilize this catalyst to convert trialing to methanol. You introduce a stream excuse me so you introduce a stream say here right so you may say okay i want to introduce a catalyst stream before the mixer for instance right you have the absolute the, the weights that was introduced um to the to the to the reaction right but you you now need to change the conversion here right because aspen will not do that for you so you come here Maybe the conversion now is 0.95, right? You change it and you move on, right? So yeah, so I think um, these queries, these questions were quite interesting. Um, and I'm really very happy that I got, um, I'm getting interactions from the viewers. I, I love the questions. So please, I will encourage us to have a quick read of that paper um, that will be linked in the description below. Have a quick read and see the method right it's, it's quite time consuming but you have alternatives so either you go for that method or you just look for the one the fraction that has the highest mole fraction right the most dominant um fatty acid constituents and you model it as a representative oil of that fatty acid company right so yeah so like i said we have got to a stage where we should be able to um find the, the techno-economic assessments of this process. So the economic assessment um, involves the linking which I've described in the past two presentations, right? So you, once you have linked it, you typically utilize costing parameters obtained from the literature or obtained from commercial vendors. So I expect that, um, except there are more questions that turn up, we should explore that possibility of at least having a quick because it's a very simple process so it shouldn't really take us that long um, so we should be able to um, begin the, 
the economic assessment approach from the next presentation. Thank you for listening. Uh, look forward to seeing you in the next class. Bye-bye.